Follow Helen Paul and I, Frank Donga. Do you know that Nigeria is the third largest producer of ginger in the world? Maybe that's why we have this ginger touch. Ginger, oh, ginger. And time's up. As we uncover the untold stories of food heroes on the front lines. If I have money, I will maximize this place. I have the capacity to plant 500 hectares a year. Parasites is the major problem also in farming. Connecting them to untapped opportunities and the experts who can solve their problems. You can't plant the same time somebody can plant. Nice plant. We have to follow the NAMIT report to know when the rainfall and you know, the best is So that is the challenge. If tomato touches the water, then it starts rotting. Tomato should not touch the water. This is Farm and Fortune. Tonight on Farm and Fortune. What other thing does the farmer need to take care of to ensure that the cocoa trees last long? Because we got a letter from someone Having looked at the fertility status of the soil, we can recommend to the farmer that they should apply. Deliberations are going on between the two teams. Discussing with their teammates. It's all coming up right now. So, what are we reading? It's a letter we got from one of our viewers. I really like it when they send us letters. It's true now. We like hearing from our people, you know. <laughs> it's nice. So, what did the letter say? It says, I have a situation and I need your help. Okay. My dad passed on earlier this year, oh. and he willed me his cocoa farm. Correct. I visited it for the first time last weekend. That's right. And I'm so confused. Why? I don't even know where to start. Uh. What kind of care does cocoa need? Uh, where do I start from? Hmm. This letter is from Bayo, from Akure. Well, first of all, uh, Condolence to Bayo from Akure for his father's passing on. And also, congratulations, Bayo, because oh. you're about to hammer. Ah, yes, now. You just inherited Cocoa Farm. <laughs> Welcome to Millionaire Club. Me, I don't even know that people will Cocoa Farm to their children uh -huh. like that. So suddenly, you just become a Cocoa Farmer. Yes, Ke. You don't know that. <laughs> a tree that can survive for up to 200 years. Uh -huh. That is something. Why yeah. being productive? One generation will benefit from it, pass it to the next generation, uh -huh. to the next generation, uh -huh. and to the next generation. It's your time now, so maximize it. <laughs> Congratulations, Bayo. Bayo should not eh? worry. He should not worry, because on the show today, we're uh -huh. going to be talking about what he needs to manage that cocoa farm so that he can benefit maximally from it. Our experts that are coming on the show today, that's what they will discuss. Hmm, congratulations. <laughs> Bayo, you yeah. sit down, Wo, and every other person, sit down and mm. learn. No? My name is Helen Paul. And I'm Frank Donga. And you're welcome to Farm, Farm and Fortune. Fortune. Our guest on today's show is from the Cocoa Research Institute of Nigeria, Kareen Inibado. He knows all there is to know about the cocoa tree and starting up the whole cocoa business as a plantation. He is Dr. Moses Ogunlade. You're welcome, sir. Gracious, man. Thank you for coming on our show, Dr. Ogunlade. Thank you, Doctor, how do you even start a cocoa farm? Well, to start a cocoa farm, we have to begin by the choice of a suitable land. Hmm. So we have to select suitable land for cocoa. And when I say suitable land, Cocoa is a tree crop, like we know, and it's a deep-rooted crop. The soil, the choice of soil is key because mm -hmm. it's, an, it's a long-time investment. Mm -hmm. A very deep soil has to be selected so that we don't uh, plant cocoa on a shallow soil. After the investment of maybe three, four, five years, we just discover cocoa is planted on the rock. Oh, that's what you mean by deep soil. Like, like there's soil. no rock under the soil. And there's no rock under the soil. How will you know? I will know. That's why they will engage <laughs> the, uh, expert the like service you. of the expert like us. Okay. So we check the depth. It's not only about the depth. We also check the soil texture. Hmm. I want to ask you a question. If you have a very good, you know, beautiful cocoa tree, you know, that's is very solid. How often can it yield interest in a year? Uh, you see, cocoa is a type of tree mm. that can produce cocoa all through the year. 
All through the year? All through the year. Hmm. Giving the conducive environment. Great. But it has period where you have bumper harvest. Okay. There is what we call main season, okay. main harvest season, and the light harvest so season. So it has how many seasons? Uh, the main season? The main season, the uh -huh. light season. Let me the explain. Light season, yes. Uh, the gestation period for cocoa. When cocoa flower is pollinated today, okay. and fertilization has taken place, okay. It takes six months before the pot will be ready. Wow. Six months. Six months. So that means the cocoa can fruit, I mean, can get, you can get fruit twice in, in the year. minimum hmm. in a year. What other thing does the farmer need to take care of to ensure that the cocoa trees last long? Because we got a letter from someone saying he inherited a farm from his father, you know, but he's been trying to maintain the farm and see how to keep it at maximum production. So let's say somebody inherited a farm from his father. How does he put things together? What are the activities you do to a plantation like that to make sure that the cocoa lasts? Yes. He, he will have to come to this. Routine maintenance oh. is key. There are some absent farmers. They only come to the farm when they want to harvest whatever they can pluck, that's when they come to the farm. Yes. There are cultural practices, good, we call it good agricultural practices, that he has to ensure he carry out routinely hmm. to get the best out of that farm he, he inherited. Weeding is one. Weeding? Weeding is very key. So. You see, weeds, they serve as a source of food and shelter for insects and pests and even rodents. Mm. So you see it as your crop to get your golden egg, that's the pod, mm -hmm. to give you money. But they don't see it that way. Mm. They see it as free food. They are coming, the pests are coming, and they hide under the, the weed. If you, the farm is too bushy, they hide there and they cause the havoc on the tree. So, you, you, it, it's, zero, it's zero tolerance to, to, weed. to weeds. That's one. Mm -hmm. Then I talk about uh, pruning. Okay. As a, this is a stand, this, that's another stand. When the canopy is closed, you will see them, the branches interlocking. Yes. And uh, the farmer will have to be ruthless, make sure he prune the unwanted uh, branches. Okay. Like now, this is a branch, this is another that branch. Crossing it. You will look at which one is, this is heavier than this one. And then you will this cut one. this one. Because uh, the sunlight, the leaves, is, they are the cooking pot of a plant. Whatever nutrient you apply, whether native or you are the one that apply it, the root take it up and it goes to the leaf waiting for sun to get it cooked. Hmm. That's what we call photosynthesis in uh, photosynthesis, yes, in science. So photosynthesis takes place in the leaf and without sunlight. So if this branch is here now and one is covering it, you cut down this, this one, one will not see. Hmm. It will be taking nutrients from the soil. It will just be wasting your nutrients because this, it will not have None access to of, light. Yes. It is when the food is cooked in the leaf, hmm. it will not distribute to, the leaf will eat its own Sent to the stem, sent to the root. To the pod. Is the, the one that is not consumed, that is safe, mm -hmm. that we have as pod. As pod. Like you have uh, extra money to put in bank. So that yeah. means the leaves is very important. If any disease catches the leaf ah, or catches the... Just we, remove, remove all the leaves, there will be no pod. We need to talk about all those diseases and about... No, 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 you have one story for us from Ondo State. Let's quickly go to Ondo State to see how a farmer is taking care of his cocoa farm. Enjoy. When you choose to play on the fields of the ancient agrarian marketplace, consider a good coach to take along with you. The Udongo app is your gateway to the Nigerian agricultural ecosystem. Whether you are a newbie or an oldie, signing up instantly connects you with a community of other farmers, products, agents, distributors and resources all in one place. 
Access our unique and simple interface from the bustling big cities to the most remote regions across Nigeria. Enjoy full access to real-time farming solutions that help you make timely and profitable decisions. Or allow our one-on-one -on -one consultancy services cheer you on with each move you make. As a newbie or oldie looking to make a big agricultural footprint, feel secure knowing you have the best coach always in your pocket. Udongo app is your personalized farming coach, available to you every time, anywhere, just at the click of a button. Download the Udongo app from the Google Play Store now and enjoy new opportunities. Mr. Falabi grows cocoa on over three hectares of arable farmland. Cocoa is a cash crop in high demand. So, ordinarily, Mr. Falabi should be smiling to the bank. I started farming cocoa about nine years ago. And then this cocoa belongs to my father. And immediately my father died, dead. I heard it, the farm cocoa. Many people, they are looking to buy cocoa. There are no rejection to buy cocoa as at today. They are looking for it always. In olden days, if we plant cocoa, and then it will remain like, the, like that. But now, if we are planting, it will start to die. That is the only challenges that we have. Secondly, parasites is the major problem also that, is, that we are having in farming. Uh, our cocoa is dying because of the law of fertility of land. It appears that pests and diseases keep attacking Mr. Falabi's trees and reducing his yield year after year. At least we are seeing the pests and uh, the uh, arms very long Many years ago, even before I lost my father, we are seeing it. Especially, so, uh, so your aunt is very disturbing farmer. All this place is disturbing all the farmers in this Ikoba community. Before, in olden days, we are realizing 20 bars at once, but immediately, this ant started to disturb in us. It reduced the product reduced into 16 bags, 14 bags. It's gotten so bad that he's not able to farm some parts of the land because the pests have taken over. So at least multi try, multi practice here, just like one to three, four years. So by doing that. Oh, that when you prefer more and more, so that is why I just abandon it like that. At least, ni odu kan mama ba ya boy meji. That is one one ten. Mama ba ya to si uwo unje wo. Uwo unje wo gan. That means multiply by two. Uwo tan ba ye. At least lori le ye ba ye tin ba kaple two uwo tin multi na. I'm a lost be almost nine hundred thousand naira. Ti o de me so koko jadi. So we digan ti mo fi abandon. Especially that ti ba ye lost si sale ba Apart from the farm patch that is wasting away, other parts of the farm are also affected by this challenge. Nevertheless, some of the cocoa trees have managed to remain healthy. And then, in the issue, Kokoni can land me, I'm be a gay or gay day. So, issue, Kosi can see coffee sushi, Kosi can see coffee, a gay she, but it's only that a cocoa, the candle jet in one man. A it can get on low pod. It can get la right, but it can get one bad DNA. While they hope for a better solution, Mr. Folabi and his farm hand deal with it the best way they can. Uh, the way that I take to control, to take care of my cocoa, during the January, February, I look for a job, laborer, in order to assist me. There is an engine known as a motor blue, and I will look for a water, add the chemical into that water, and turn it into the engine. 
and spray all the body of the tree. Many parasites on the tree, it will just removed after three days, four days. My father is the one that who trained me. After that, there is a one association here. And then they gather all of the farmer and then they started giving us the training. Before, if I, ha if I remove, if I pluck my cocoa, the following day, and I will start to dry it, immediately they give us a training. They said that it is not good. And they give, gave us a training that we supposed to leave just five days before we apply drying. Regardless of the challenges, Mr. Falabi's farm continues to produce enough pods to meet its customers' demands. I harvest cocoa in a year at least six times. First time started by March, April, June, July, September, December. After the harvest of my cocoa, I sold it to a dealer. After that, dealer we sold it to agents. The products that I receive in my farm is totally low than those people demand. Mr. Falabi needs an intervention before pests and diseases render all his pods useless. <sighs> Who would have thought those tiny things would cause that large hmm. impact on that big farm? Yes, it's, it's critical. See, doctor, you know for human beings, we take vaccine, we take treatment when we are small. Mm. Because at that age, you are very, very delicate and prone to disease. Mm. There are some diseases that once you grow to a certain age, you don't mm. escape. Is cocoa like that? At what stage is the cocoa tree most vulnerable that if you want to go into the business, you better pay attention at that stage? And two, what kind of pests and diseases can ruin somebody in cocoa farming? Yes. Thank you. Cocoa is prone to uh, attack of pests and diseases at all the stages. All the oh. stages? All the stages. No dodging. From no seedling dodging. to adulthood. So you have to take care, good wow. care of, of the crop. So it's not a crop you plant, you say you are going to sleep mm. Mm. and you are waiting to come and harvest. Oh. It requires attention, but it's doable if the farmer is ready to take care. Mm. There are measures to put in place to control, to That's prevent. Mm. Okay. It is when, after all you have done to prevent and control the outbreak, that you go to how to now manage mm. whatever imagined pest or disease. In that, so, okay. in that documentary that our friend, you yes. know, our friend in Nondo, mm -hmm. we saw those ants that were attacking his pods. It was so bad that he had to spray. If it's so bad like that, is there anything he can do? Maybe abandon that part of the farm? Maybe they will no. come back later? Or what's the solution to that? You see, the hands hand he even showed, they are not the major problem. They are still good, Abby. The major problem uh, are very tiny insects. We call them brown cocoa myrids. Brown cocoa myrids. Brown cocoa myrids or, or brown cocoa capsids. Brown cocoa myrids. They are tiny, tiny. Uh, how do you prevent them from coming? And if they come, how do you get rid of them? So you, you prevent them the way I say you should prevent them. Good management them. practices. Good, 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 management management good practice. agricultural practices. Mm. Okay. You, 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 you prevent them or reduce them to the minimum. Okay. That's a one. But now that they have come, uh, we also have insecticide to kill them, to deal with them. So they, they have a needle-like piercing and sucking mouth part. They are very tiny. They suck, they pierce into the pod hmm. or any succulent part of the plant. They, they pierce, and that's why they are more common during the dry season, towards the dry season. Hmm. 
when there are no other plants around and they know cocoa is evergreen, mm -hmm. it will still be there. So they mm -hmm. come around, pierce through, suck on the pod. Once they suck like this, they now leave scars. You would think it's just the scars on no. top of this, the, the, the beans inside is bad. The quality is affected. Kai. The cocoa flavor, that's what they, they cherish in chocolate. Okay. The flavor is affected. <laughs> wow. The quantity also. Exactly. Sometimes when you break the cocoa pot open, the beans inside are bad. So you have to use a recommend. We also have recommended insecticide for uh, that brown cocoa marriage that is. Uh, Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. So I have learned that to keep anything healthy, you just need a little tender love, care, to keep it going, especially our cocoa mm -hmm. trees. Yes, so, yes. yes, so you see, if you want to learn more on how to keep your own cocoa tree beautiful, healthy, we are going straight into our DIY that's do it yourself to learn more on it. Don't go anywhere, so enjoy and learn it. We'll be right back. Welcome is the Farm and Fortune DIY hack and today I'll be showing you how to identify a healthy cocoa pod. A healthy cocoa pod should look like this. If your cocoa pod has black or brown spots like this, it means the black pod disease is in its early stage. Cocoa can still be useful if it is used immediately. If your cocoa pod is black or brown like this, the black pod disease is in its advanced stage and the whole pod is affected. Cocoa is no longer useful at this stage. And that's how you identify a healthy cocoa pod. It's still fam and fortune. And we have, of course, our secret of the soil experts in person of Baba Jide Ahmed. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much. So looking at the secret of the soil. Okay, now looking at the secret of the soil, we are looking at the soil from Idonre in Ondo State. Okay. The crop grown here is cocoa. Now let's look at the fertility status of the soil. Okay. The major macronutrients here are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Hmm. And from the screen, we can see that they are all low. The major micronutrients are calcium, magnesium, and boron. Mm. Why magnesium and boron are very low. Having looked at the fertility status of the soil, we yes. can recommend to the farmer that you should apply NPK fertilizer, 184 kg per hectare, okay. which is equivalent to 3.6 bags. This, this should be applied between May and June. Okay. In addition, the farmer also to apply NPK fertilizer at 184 kg per hectare, okay. which is also equivalent to 3.6 bags. This should be applied between August and September. So the first one should be between May, May and June, yes. and second one, August, August and, and September. September. With this recommendation, the yield from the farm is going to increase substantially. Thank wow, you. wow. Thank you so much, our special expert. You're welcome. All right, guys, you see, I'm learning every time from the secrets of the soil, and I'm sure you're learning as well. Next segment is the game, game, game with Mr. Frank. Let's go enjoy. Thank you. It's game time on Farm and Fortune, and you know how we do it here. 16 farmers competing for a total grand prize of 500,000 Naira worth of farm imputes. And right now, I have these four gentlemen again with me in two teams that will be going head to head. On my right, I have the orange team, and on my left, I have the green team. And all they have to do is answer a series of questions, after which a winner will be determined all they have to do is press the bell when they hear the question and they know the answer. <coughs> now I'm going to introduce our contestants. They are the ones that were lucky enough to scale through the previous uh, knockout round. And I have with me Kude Mepo Boluwatife teaming up with Israel Alabi. Congratulations. Thank you for Thank having you us. Know, and I also have Charles Osuya teaming up with Adeyemi Adeoye. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. And the question goes like this. The highest producing country of cocoa in West Africa is A, Indonesia, B, Ivory Coast, C, Egypt, and D, Nigeria. Yes. Ivory Coast. You said? Ivory Coast. It's Ivory Coast. Correct. The black pod disease of cocoa is caused by what? A, bacteria, B, virus, C, fungi, and D, nematode. Okay, green team. Nematode. That is indeed 
very wrong. All right, over to you, Orange Sea. That is, of course, very wrong. Neither of the teams got it right. Let's go to the next question. The recommended spacing for cocoa tree is A, 6 meters by 6 meters, B, 3 meters by 3 meters, C, 9 meters by 9 meters, and D, 7 meters by 7 meters. The deliberations are going on between the two teams, discussing with their teammates. Beyond, we have the orange team press the bell. The orange three team meters by three meters. You said? Three meters by three meters. Well, they are right. That's the correct answer. Orange team got it right. Thank you very much. That's the end of the game. But guess what? We need to tally your scores. But before then, I have good news for both teams. For crossing over from the previous segment, the previous uh, knockout uh, sessions to this one, each team and each member of each team gets a guaranteed 20,000 Naira worth of farm imputes. All right, now, whoever wins this round to go on to the next round automatically has another guaranteed sum of 30,000 Naira worth of farm imputes. Huh? And that's going to take you to the next round. So do we have our scores? And we have a winner. But well, hey, like I said, everyone is a winner. The green team still has a guaranteed sum of 20,000 Naira worth of farm imputes. All right? You have a guaranteed 20,000 Naira worth of farm imputes. So everyone is a winner, including you at home. Yes, everyone is a winner. All you have to do is connect with us, watch all the episodes of Farm and Fortune, get more knowledge, get involved with agriculture. Join us on Facebook, on Instagram, and YouTube. Subscribe to our channel, share, and like. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Did you see that game segment? Mm -hmm. ah, it was fire, you know? So much intellectual gas, 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 gas. So you're feeling it. Feel like you're feeling it. Wait until next week. Mm. Ah, it's going to be more intense. I can't wait to know who the winner will be for the final. Uh -uh, let's just be patient now. How many seconds now? It will be next week and another episode. Mm. That's true. Mm. Oh, we want you to please join us on all our social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, at Farm and Fortune. Let's and talk. Just follow, subscribe, and share. Until then, I'm Frank Donga. I'm Helen Paul. See, See you, you next week. week.